is what I want from everyone. I don't want you doing it my way. I, I do my own stuff my way. I want you doing your own stuff your way. And along this, we're going to talk about where I want things to be. And I just heard from the back people talking about how Bitcoin's more difficult to use because of tap cards. In the next year, you're going to see a number of technologies we've been patenting and releasing uh, and getting ready. And we're going to make it so that tap cards are that thing that people talked about and go, when I was a kid, we had this really difficult technology that was not secure and it's awful. You had to actually tap a card. Ooh. It's actually going to be that different. That's where we're going. And we've got this sort of thing here. We had 4.3 gigabytes actually could be in a transaction in, in version one. Uh, seems a bit strange and people look at that weirdly and all the rest. And we've got so little on what transaction volume is. But our goal is next year we're going to basically have the protocol without all the interference. We're going to up everything so that we can handle at least 4,000 transactions a second. And after that, we're going to increase it again when we get to multiple gigabyte blocks. And then when Terranode's out, we're aiming for 2 million. And we're aiming within two to three years to have two to four million transactions a second peak. And then we're going to keep going. My goal is very simple. I'm going to do the Dr. Evil bit here. A billion transactions. <laughs> Why? Because we want to start everything. We want the fourth industrial revolution. We want everything. When I talk the other day about being able to authenticate, I mean we can start device authenticating more securely than passwords. We can start encryption tunnels more securely. We can make mobile IP work. We can actually have IPv6 tunnels that self-replicate routes so that anywhere in the world your actual IP address that you have routes to you, anywhere. Why? Because we want to actually start storing data usably on the blockchain. And that's some of the things we've been working on. So we've been doing compression algorithms, uh, advanced scripting, all these other things that work with just the original, and I mean only the original version, 0.1.0 scripting technologies. Nothing I'm going to talk about requires anything that wasn't in the 2009 version of Bitcoin. We're going to start having your keys control access. Imagine a global internet, a global internet of everything stored, and imagine that every 15 months, because of doubling, it doesn't matter anymore, because unit one doubles, so your entire history of the internet fits into the other half of what you've doubled. And the year after that, that fits into the other half. We never run out of space. Theoretically, with modern physics, around the year 2601, Moore's law hits a dead end. But that's someone else's problem, and I'm not going to worry about it for now. That's what the grandchildren are for, hopefully. Now, we want to disrupt everything. We want to make something where you can create new code bases, new systems, new architectures, not of the internet, not of what we have before. We want new communication channel. IP to IP will be brought back into Bitcoin. The nature of peer transactions will be brought back next year in Bitcoin so that I can actually go up to someone and I can do an offline transaction that is just as secure as anything that happens on BTC, whatever, with a full bloody lightning node right now. In fact, more secure, utterly secure, because I don't care about my payment um, being replaced because either I get my change or the guy doesn't get paid. Again, how many merchants are going to screw me by not taking my money? Think about it. 
And we don't want it just the other. We want to be able to purchase keys get, to get data. If we store everything in multiple locations, we can have things like Netflix and whatever else, but make it simple, make it easy. Copyright's very simple. It's economic. We saw that with all of the different models. People don't really go out there to download and steal things anywhere near as much anymore, and it's getting less and less. Why? Because it's too simple to actually stream now. So why bother with all this? So it's time. It's time to shrug and change the world. And we're going to do that. As I said, everything grows exponentially. This is like the chessboard. So when I say we're going to be able to get this, it's because we should be able to do it right now. One meg blocks are a freaking attack. That's all they've been. They are the thing that destroys Bitcoin. We don't want people thinking they need to be nodes. We want people to trust competition. Miners don't validate your node. Miners go out there and validate that they couldn't find anything wrong with the other miners. Think miners are out there trying to invalidate other miners. They're trying to find errors that another miner made so that they can get a little bit more profit. Miners basically ensure that you're valid and your transaction's right because they get paid. It's capitalism 101. So what we have, we've been working on what we call MetaNet. We, in first stages, will be looking at basically integrating everything. The nature will be of a transactional ledger. Not as you know the internet now. We can have a Facebook page in a one day transaction. I said that correctly. We can actually sell you a Facebook page in a 1K transaction. We have a number of transmission uh, techniques, including compression and whatever else, where we can link to either already distributed images and all the rest in the blockchain, um, allowing decryption on the fly. Um, if people tell you you can't do Diffie-Hellman ECD uh, with more than two parties, they're wrong. Um, I solved it. So, sorry. You can do many, many parties now. It's not two different Diffie-Hellman keys, it's as many as we have. So what we're going to actually create is a replacement for the internet. The internet becomes a side chain. I don't care how, as a peer network, you distribute your data. I care that you distribute it. If you have hand cache or near field, or IP, or private networks, or X25. It's a value network. The entire global system connected commercially. We have small goals. We don't think of big things in N-Chain. So peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer was the promise of Bitcoin. Why did we remove IP to IP? Because it's insecure. What, a bank can solve it, but you can't? Amazon can solve it, but you can't? Does Amazon not sell to you because, well, man in the middle attacks might do something? No, they fixed it. In Bitcoin, everything that was good was thrown out because it was too hard. The script has an error. Do we fix it? No, throw it away because it's too hard. Turn it off, it's too hard. Scaling is too hard. We are the geniuses who gave you too hard. Peer-to-peer <laughs> -peer is coming back. This is coming back. Not for money, for everything. For any communication. You want privacy in Bitcoin. Then the ability to do an offline secure transaction to another party that's private. To have a key that is used once and destroyed is private. No tracking. If you don't want it, if you want to be secure and go up and use it as cash, then use it as cash. More, we want every bit of information 
with a value because it all has value. The difference between information and data is money. Right now, I have to pay for my Google searches with a whole pile of crap. I would rather give them half a cent a day, and that would be more profitable if everyone gave them half a cent a day. Heavy users, maybe more. So I would rather not have a page of ads be redirected to Nike shoes when I'm searching up something not even related to shoes, and actually search what I was promised, like Google used to be before ads. That's what I want. I want all of this information there, all of the things I have. I want all of my applications connected by APIs directly into the blockchain. So that's what we're going to start doing. The way we're going to open this up isn't just RPC. We're going to make different types of message queue calls different things to miners. So where we talked about miner ID, that will also allow us to have APIs. Which miner supports which APIs? It's not about this miner is uh, going to be recognized and break the consensus. It's about how does that miner differentiate themselves and sell extra services? This miner supports RabbitMQ. Great, I know now. Where do I connect? The RabbitMQ miner. This one is only open source code. Great, I get a choice. That's where we're moving. We're going to allow anyone to build on a stable protocol. Because it does this. That's what scale is. This is where people go wrong. They show you log growth and things like that. But that's the real growth. This is what happens. This is why we need a dynamic architecture, why we want to build on this. So what MetaNet is, is a foundation protocol to allow everything the internet has, except actually valued. Imagine paying people micropayments for their Wikipedia arguments, and um, actually, if they're wrong, they don't get paid. So I've, I've got a perfect example. I've got a Wikipedia page that says I don't have a doctorate, and we've contacted Wikipedia, uh, several people have, and said the university actually says I do, and they said, but Forbes said the university said you don't. <laughs> so 